Hey, my name is Ron, and I was taken advantage of by an internet confidence trickster. So back in, like, early 2021, I was sitting at work one day, just kind of minding my own business, and all of a sudden my phone rang. And I did not immediately recognize the number. Um, mind you, this is my desk phone, my work phone. Um, but occasionally I get phone calls from vendors and such, so I pick up the phone. And the person on the other end says... Hey, uh, I hope you don't mind that I just reached out to you, but, you know, I uh, Googled around and I got your number online and I thought I'd give you a call. And I immediately was kind of put off by this um, because it does seem rather strange that someone who might have seen uh, like a YouTube channel would then um, dig uh, for the work phone number of someone that is on that channel, but here we were. And they introduced themselves and they seemed very, very nice and knowledgeable about um, my channel and, and the things that I do. And so I just kind of warily uh, talked to them for a few minutes and um, and it was a it, it just kind of a regular conversation about uh, parts of the hobby they were interested in and they were interested in uh, what I was uh, doing in the hobby. Um, and so, uh, maybe had a 20, 30 minute conversation and that was it. And then the phone calls started coming two and three times a week at the busiest possible time during my day. And so just, you know, out of Midwest kindness, um, picked up the phone and was just like, Hey, and just, I got about five minutes. What do you got? And they were always very excited to tell me about um, uh, different things that they were working on or that they they had just watched my latest video and that they uh, were excited about that thing, too, and maybe had a few suggestions and, and things. And so I just kind of took it with stride because, um, again, the conversations were always very, um, very uh, sort of pleasant. And uh, I, we weren't really exchanging any kind of personal information. Uh, so um, I guess I just thought it was okay. And then one day, a letter arrived in the mail from this person sent to my work address. And it was basically just sort of a, a greeting card, just sort of a, a hey, hope, hope things are going well. And... I guess I, I don't know how you meet people, but, you know, I maybe am overly friendly with people and, and reach out. And I think that that's kind of part of my brand is just being kind of an affable kind of guy. And if you've ever met me at a at a convention or something like that, then you probably know that, um, you know, that I try to greet everybody like an old friend because that's how I'd like to be greeted. And time kind of goes on a little bit from there. And um, we got to be Twitter followers and so um he would send me messages on twitter um if if he couldn't get me on the phone or whatever um he would uh, send me a twitter message just kind of checking in and seeing how i was doing things like that and um he one day was just like hey i'm gonna give you a call um i've got an idea and i said okay and so he went ahead and um gave me a call and just said you know, a friend of me, of mine and I, we um, we went and we just cleaned out the storage unit. And um, there might be some things in the storage unit that you're interested in. And they are things like uh, old Macintosh machines and some Commodore stuff and some Amiga stuff. And it really just sort of ended up being a uh, hodgepodge of different things that might be of interest to retro people. And so he said, you know, I, I'm not really interested in selling anything, but if you're interested in maybe doing some trades, um, do you have anything you want to get rid of? And I kind of thought about it for a bit, and I had a, a Commodore Plus 4, I had like a Tandy 1000 EX, or maybe it was an HX, uh, and just some other things that were kind of maybe trade bait for getting some Macintosh things that I was wanting to get. And I said, yeah, sure, let me send you a list. Oh, no, 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 no. Just tell me. Just tell me what you got. I'm like, okay. So I told him the things that I had. 
And he said, oh, yeah, well, uh, look at the pictures and tell me what you think. And maybe if there's something you're interested in, let me know. And so I looked at the pictures and I kind of identified a couple of items. And I said, yeah, I'd really like like these things. And he said, OK, well, how about this? Go ahead and send me your plus four. And then um, I'll send you a couple of items in the mail in kind. And I really didn't have a lot in the plus four. It's just a plus four. And I think a, maybe I had the floppy drive with it. It's been a long time. Um, but I was like, yeah, it's basically, you know, that's good. It's, it's, it, I'm, it's not a huge investment if something goes wrong. So I, uh, I went ahead and I sent it off. And he received it. And he thanked me for it. And he goes, hey, I just want to verify your address. Well, the address is on the package. But sure, yeah, go ahead. And verified the address. And he said, okay, well, I'm going to get your items in the mail. Well, about a week, week and a half goes by. And finally, the package shows up. And indeed, it had the Macintosh items in it that I wanted. Well, so that was really cool. And I, uh, I wrote back and just thanked him. And then, um, uh, you know, he was like, hey, like, what else do you got? What else are you interested in? I really want that Tandy uh, 1000EX or HX or whatever. And I said, yeah, sure. Um, you know, it's it's a monitor and it's the machine and the keyboard and all that. So just just let me know um, what you think is fair. And he came up with a couple of items. And I don't really know if it was like an equitable sort of trade, but I really wasn't using the machine. And I just figured that if I could move it on to somebody that was more interested in it, that, that probably that's the greater good that I'm doing for the, the community. So I boxed it up. I sent it over there. It's kind of expensive. Mailed, mailed a monitor, too. Um, and it arrived. And some time went by. But eventually I got, I'm pretty sure most of the items that we kind of discussed. Um, he, um, he always had some kind of story about, uh, hadn't made it over to the storage unit or, um, or, uh, maybe I promised that to somebody else on accident. And so, you know, I'll make it up to you and those type of things. And since I didn't really have a ton in this equipment, I didn't really think too much about it and I didn't really worry about it. So then um, he reached out to me and he said, hey, I'm thinking about starting a Patreon. You know, you really uh, you should support me over on Patreon. I'll be um, you be my first uh, subscriber and I'll be your first subscriber. And I said, eh, I've kind of put off setting that up. But, you know, why not? When he set it up and um, I, he um, I think his minimum um, amount was five dollars or something like that. And I just, as a lark, my minimum amount was a dollar. He only ever subscribed to my stuff at a dollar while I had $5 going out to him. But I figured, well, this is, is such a nice guy. And, you know, he's trying to get all this stuff going. And, you know, he sent me a couple things. And more than that, he still owes me maybe a couple of things. So I don't really want to upset him. So, eh, it's fine. It's only $4. What's $4? It's a cup of coffee. No big deal. And then the request, to, and then the request started to find out, um, well, who are some of your friends? And, and what, what, what do they do? And what are they interested in? Because, man, I got this huge storage unit. It's just full of stuff. And, uh, you know, if I could just figure out a way to move some of this stuff along, because, you know, the storage fees on this thing are just eating me alive. They're just eating me alive. Oh, my gosh. I cannot believe how much I'm spending every month in storing this stuff. And, and all I'm doing is giving it away. All I'm doing is trading it to people. Uh, it seems like a huge expense. And I said, yeah, it's probably a big expense. And just kind of based on where he lives, I was like, yeah, maybe that sounds right for your neck of the woods, uh, what a storage unit might cost. Um, but, I mean, it does appear to be a pretty big one. So, um he was like, yeah, you know, if I could just find a couple people that would, you know, help me pay for this every month. And I said, yeah, I said, I really don't have that kind of money laying around. Um, but, you know, it's uh, there's other people in the community that especially if you're holding on to it just to turn it around and, and give it to people that would probably be sympathetic. Yeah. You know, if I could just meet some of those folks. And I said, well, I mean, there's there's different people kind of in the Commodore community. Well, you know, I, I know a lot of those people. Okay, well, I mean, there's a lot of people in the kind of the retro PC community. Yeah, I know a lot of those people. I'm friends with some of the big name people in that community. Okay. 
Well, yeah, I don't really know. I don't know anybody that would be bigger than that. Well, you know, uh, some of your friends and stuff, maybe maybe like some of your Macintosh friends, maybe they'd be kind of interested in some of this stuff too. And I said, yeah, um, I mean, you could reach out to them. They're, they're pretty accessible. Um, never gave away people's phone numbers or, or email addresses or anything, but I was like, yeah, they all have social media and they're all, uh, I don't think they have their stuff locked down so much that you couldn't reach out to them. So maybe, um, maybe do that. Maybe reach out to them. And he did. He reached out to all of them. And like eventually he stopped calling me and he stopped uh, messaging me on Twitter. And any time that he would message me, uh, it was always sort of like very like kind of aggressive where it was, um, hey, I watched your latest video and, and you did this wrong or I don't like this or or you should split your channel. You need a second channel that is just strictly for um, this type of content that you do. Like that, that doesn't fit with your main um, with your main channel. And um, and this really started up right about the time that Shorts, uh, YouTube Shorts, got to kind of be a thing because I I had a lot of success um, with that. Where I mean, uh, I'm consistently year over year. I think the first year. Um, I had, uh, you know, a couple hundred thousand views, um, just in shorts alone. And, um, it actually was making a, like a tiny bit of money, like a tiny bit. I think I made $10 or something like nothing. I mean, some channels get millions of views. He's got like a couple thousand views each. Um, but he was, uh, it seemed like, uh, kind of petty, and so, but I just brushed it off because this guy is a friend. This guy is a friend. And, uh, you know, he's just, yeah, you know, it's he's kind of looking out for me. Like, he, he, he thinks he knows what's best. But, you know, maybe he doesn't know the whole picture. So, um, I, uh, you know, that just kind of went on for a while. And then finally things just kind of trickled down to nothing. To nothing. And then one of my Macintosh friends reached out to me. And my friend is like, hey, um, you know your friend um, that kind of comes and hangs around and, you know, he doesn't really do Mac content. He does like he, he's really big. He does like Naboo content. Um, he does um, a lot of Commodore stuff. And I said, yeah, yeah, I know, I know who you're talking about. And he goes, well, um, you know, I've bought quite a bit of stuff from him. And I said, oh, well, you know, um, he sent me a few things in the past. Um, you know, but not, um, I mean, we didn't do like major trading or anything, like just maybe a couple machines. And he goes, yeah, I'm, um, I've bought quite a bit of stuff from him and I've not received any of it. And I said, you've not received any of it. And he goes, maybe one or two items, but this is like a dozen items or more. And I said, well, uh, do you want me to reach out or anything? And he said, no, you don't have to. I'm, I, I'm sure that he's just busy or that he's got, um, things going on. That's just kind of, you know, it's that, you know, he, he's been through a lot this last year and work and, you know, just other little personal stuff going on. So, you know, just benefit of the doubt. I said, okay. And then another friend came to me and said, Hey, you know, our mutual friend, the Naboo guy, the Commodore guy. And I said, yeah. And he goes, have you, um, have you heard from him lately? And I said, no, I haven't heard from him in a while. I said, I don't know. He seems mad at me for some reason. And he goes, well, you know, I've traded some stuff with him and I never got anything back. I sent the items, uh, but I never got anything. And I said, oh, well, um, you know, our other mutual friend just said something similar. Yeah, that's really weird. I wonder if he's okay. And so it was kind of some concern that something had happened to our friend or someone we thought was our friend. But then more stories started pouring in and more and more people had similar stories of receiving just random phone calls or random communication from this person that call, called them up to, to grease the wheels, as it were. And to uh, maybe kind of feel them out and see what um, what they 
uh, what they had and what he could take advantage of and what he could get from them. And all told, um, a half dozen or more people in the Macintosh community seemingly have similar stories to mine. Um, and I thought, well, I, I wonder what else is happening out there. Well, then I started talking to people in other communities online, in the arcade community. I started talking to people in the, um, the Commodore community. I started talking to people that um, uh, follow um, kind of uh, broader retro gaming, like for consoles and stuff. And the more and more people I talked to, the more and more that I realized what a chameleon this guy is and how he uses social networking to ingratiate himself with various online communities so that he can build up trust. And name drops famous people maybe in those communities and in um, the broader sort of retro computing world that he's, oh, he's friends. He's friends with that person. Um, more than just, you know, YouTube celebrities and stuff. But, I mean, he's absolutely leveraged that for um, to get unearned social capital uh, to be able to get closer to other people. Um, but, you know, claim to be friends with Steve Wozniak. Claim to be friends with Kevin Mitnick. Claim to be friends with uh, just about anybody. If you had a story, he had some kind of connection to that that was better than whatever story it was you were telling because he was there or, or he knew that guy or whatever. And after a while there, there's a point where it just, the bragging wears thin and then you just don't know what to believe, but it turns out you couldn't actually believe anything about this guy start to finish. It was all a lie. Everything. He didn't care who he had to lie to, what he had to say, who he had to hurt to get what he wanted. Because it's just who he is and what he does. So if you know my friend or the guy I thought was my friend and you've been taken advantage of, too. Now's the time to come forward and now's the time to say something, because to continue to let this person operate in the shadows it only aids them. It only aids them and creates more victims and creates um, a bigger rift in various communities. Because this guy's done a good job. He's got people snowed. He absolutely has people convinced that he's the good guy. And what it really comes down to is this. There's three groups of people. The first group are people that he scammed. The second group are people that he hasn't scammed yet. And the third group are the people that Sean has convinced that group A are a bunch of liars. <laughs>